Hello again, and welcome to phase three of the Noble Dragon drawing. Um, again, this is a more advanced video, um, just where I'm walking through through my drawing process. And in this one, we are in phase three, which is the refined line work. And so at this phase, this is when I, I make sure it's exactly how I want it to look, kind of the, the blueprint of everything after this. And so, you probably hear me say this all the time. You know, one of the first things I do, I flip it around, kind of look at it, um, look at it small and large, because sometimes you get into these details, right? And you don't see if something's missing, but like, I like the flow of that horn. Man, this is an intense, like, mane that this dragon has, but I'm really digging it, so. I don't know why, why do I always draw things facing that way? And it's it's whenever I do profile mode, but I, and maybe that's because artists, we always start drawing profiles. So anyway, we'll get to some more advanced drawing stuff later. So one of the things, and you may have heard me mention it, you know, sometimes I like my noble dragons to feel a little bit more sympathetic, a little bit kinder. I mean, this guy seems a little bit angry. So I just come in here and use my little liquify brush. Oops. And I don't, and I just do some slight adjustments so the eye looks more open. So look, if I reset it, you know, that line right there at the eyebrow is what kind of gives it a little more of a stern look. But if we open it up a little bit, you know, it helps. So overall, I think I got a little sloppy with my lines. If you do this right the first time, then you don't have to go back and redo this. But I just want to make sure these lines are crystal clear. I also don't like these lines to be thick. Okay, see, let's see where, let's make sure the eyelids are connecting. There we go. Yeah, that's looking better. You know, there's the eyelid and there's always like the features behind it. Let me clean this up a little bit. Upper eyelid, too thick. You know, that's kind of where it connects. And I mean, studying human or figure drawing uh, helps a ton because then, I mean, even understanding, you know, the way the, the brow is structured on a human, you can understand that, that curve, how it, it curves around, but then also curves upward. You know, and so now the eyes got the detail that I want it to. Here and let's connect some of these lines. You probably always hear me talk about the flow of your lines. Something like that is a lot more attractive than that. But. And I don't like, I know I curved that line around, but I'm not sure if I like that. Let me fix this line. Yeah, so that's a lot better. Except, there we go. I kept drawing such a thick line. 
And it's okay to put these on. Yeah, I still don't like that. Like I want it to be something more like that. I think that's wrong too. So let's, yeah, something like that. Because then I can add that little bump of the skin wrapping around. Just gotta make sure your lines flow smoothly. You know, and you want to look at each line and be like, okay, this line's communicating what's happening in 3D space. So you can kind of, I mean, once you know that the general shape of it, then you can go back in and add some of that detail that shows, you know, that the dragon's face isn't smooth like a bowling ball, like there's little divots and whatnot that kind of create it who it is. Let me look at where his jaw because sometimes I like, you know, this cheekbone horn kind of hides the mouth a little bit. And you may be hearing my dog getting upset at people minding their own business. Okay, there we go. You now you may be thinking like, uh, you already drew all these lines, why don't you just draw them right from the beginning? Well, uh, I wish I did. Nose, I don't, I don't mind if that line's a little bit thicker. Just trying to add in some of these little details. And if you're familiar with my art, you know I love the details. Probably too much. That's why these drawings take forever. You know, the other thing to keep in mind is even the age of the dragon. And I, I default to kind of this like dragon in their prime age. Um, and, and so I keep all these lines, you know, pretty young and fit looking, but that that's always something. One second. Okay, I'm back. I calmed his nerves a little bit. It's probably because I'm drawing too much and ignoring him. Well, I don't ignore him, but. Okay. See, then when I get in here, you gotta think of that jaw, and that's a, a separate structure from the back of his skull. And dragons, obviously, you have to think of their skull structure because they support these massive horns. And I also like looking at these horns, like what what are, what's their shape in 3D space? You know, like this, and then it like curves over this way, that sort of thing. And so you always have to be thinking in 3D space. That's why like art teachers, a lot of the times what they have you do the most, they'll just have you draw like a whole bunch of cubes and circles. That's because everything's based on those things. Yeah, maybe I should do an art video where I just draw cubes and circles the whole time. Like, this is how you draw dragons. Trust me, just do it. Okay. Smoothing out some of those lines. Okay. 
Okay. So let me clean these up a little bit. And the one thing I found that if I spend my time getting this line work sharp, then it's less work to do when I go into the final stages. Once again, you see me erasing lines I already drew. I know. But look how much thicker they are. There we go. That one's probably fine. Just rework this section. Mm. See, and I got to pay attention to the arc of those scales. So let me make sure this horn. like this should probably rotate just slightly that way and then you just kind of see a little edge that other one yeah I don't think it'll be noticeable anyway but it helps see still it needs it more Because you want to make sure that pattern matches from here to there. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I mean, that spacing's probably not very good. Let me move it once again. Yeah, so that one I don't think will be noticed when we go into the final. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. This line's kind of chunky. Let's fix this line a little bit. And keeping in line with our aesthetic, there's kind of that little bend right there, which maybe gives us enough room to make a little one. Okay, so then what I'm seeing is I always hate it when lines extend out from a point. Because visually it just looks awkward. So I just kind of want to do some slight adjustments with a line that's not too thick. Here we go. That one makes, that line gets a little thick. I can adjust both of these. Maybe I 
I should draw things without so many details. Like, what the heck? Okay. You know, some of these line variances I can always fix in the final pass, the details pass. See, and it's at this, this phase that it's really important to figure out, you know, when I first put down the line work, uh, you know, some of this stuff isn't fully connecting, and that's okay, because you're just making sure it works. But at this stage, see, I don't like lines that line up exactly. Uh, but at this stage, you want to know exactly where your lines are. Maybe I will add that back in. No, it doesn't need it. Nobody's going to notice it in the final. Can we add? Let's see, that's... I always hate this. I, I should just learn to draw this in layers so I can draw the arc of the scales perfectly and then I'll just come back and erase it, but. Yeah, bump, 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 bump. Oh, well, before I do these, let me double check. You always want to start with the scales that are closest up here and then work your way back. Which means I should be starting on these. These actually look pretty good. I don't have a lot of complaints about these. Because I'll go in and fix some of these lines on the detail phase. Clean some of this up. But no, I think those are looking good. So then let's go to the next set. This one's a mess. Who drew this line? You know what, these aren't that bad either. It's always transitioning when it's going behind space because it's easy to lose track of your pattern. But things that grow organically in a pattern usually flow very smoothly. And again, it all depends. Like maybe you're drawing a dragon that's been through a lot, had a lot of experience. Sometimes their scales get busted up and... Those may be, you know, more sporadic, but for this guy, I'm imagining a younger dragon. See, this is where lines can get confusing because that line comes straight into that. Um, and I, I think that confuses the viewer. It helps readability. I mean, you're not just an artist, you're a designer. When you're creating something, 
you have the control of changing it so it doesn't look weird. Don't want to get the lines too thick, even though a lot of this can be cleaned up. You know, if I didn't like the shape, then I'd totally redraw, but a lot of this can be cleaned up in the detail phase. It's just the more that gets cleaned up now. Let me adjust this. And come back here and most of this will just be connecting these lines oh see there We've got another one let me actually change this scale I like the size of those. But if I have this come right there. That one's pretty close. And it's pretty easy to adjust. That one wasn't as bad as others. But you have the control to make the adjustments. Why not? There we go. It's looking good. Let's check this out. So we got some interesting scale patterns going on right here. This also helps getting your line work solid right from the beginning um, because the shading ends up happening in layers. Like the more you layer your shading, the more natural it looks. And so if the right line works down and then you shade on top of it, um, it helps maintain the definition, you know, without losing some of the lines in the shading. Looks like it was a lot looser down here. Thank you. 
so that's scale. That's off. Which then I offset all of these. But that's okay. You know, maybe this will just kind of evolve into a, a little bit more of a line. Because then we can just come in here and Okay, that's looking good. Put some detail lines in here. It looks like I just kind of threw some of these in there. Which is okay, because sometimes you're just figuring some things out. But you just want to make sure in the end, everything is very deliberate. Well, I mean, at least that's how I approach my art. Like maybe if you're a painter, it's okay just to throw down a few swaths of color and it communicates the scales just fine. I end up being a crazy person and sit here and draw every single scale. What the heck am I doing? Yeah, I need to rebrand this video instead of how to draw dragons. How to go insane drawing 3 million scales. I wonder if I should keep a tally. How many scales have I drawn in my lifetime? Ooh, do not like that. See, oops. This progression looks a lot better. It's more consistent, more gradual. Flows a lot better. Okay, let's look at this. Oh yeah, here's my favorite part. Then it's all hidden underneath his chin. I don't have to draw more details. And let's come back and check these. I really like his beard. It has some nice character, his beard scales. So that connects there. Some rando lines there. You may also notice as I, the longer I spend here, sometimes I get more impatient. I'm like, I'll just fix it in the finishing details. But then I get into the finishing details and I'm like, why didn't I fix it in the beginning? But you see how there's just little, there's lines that are left out. 
And I just want to make sure those are defined. You know, because that, you want that to travel in progression. Let's see, we got this kind of line. Okay, maybe there's just some lines because dragons will have this kind of loose skin underneath their neck as they move around. Okay, then let's look at these lines. Let's make sure these connect. Just redraw this one. And I missed those. Okay. Now that I'm in here up close. I imagine the noble dragons to be very, you know, beautiful looking dragons. Very intricate scale designs and colors. Okay. And there, I'm sure there's gonna be other details that I put in here, but you know what? I think I'm done. Well, done with phase three. After I fix that line. Yeah, phase three. So I went back through and refined all the line work, made sure all the lines are connecting, making sure it's looking exactly how I want it. Because then I just have to go in and put the shading and the details. So yeah, I'm super excited with how it's looking and it's time for the next phase. So next phase is basic shading. It's a quick pass. Um, so thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in for the next video and follow along on how to draw dragons with the dragon story. Thanks.